Hello and welcome to the Scatterfold channel. And today I'm gonna to show you guys how to build the best $500 gaming PC that anybody can build. And the best part, and the best part is that this is going to be an all white PC parts PC build. And no, I'm not clickbaiting you guys. If we actually add the prices of each of these components, 80 bucks, $150, 50 bucks, 40 bucks, 80 bucks, 80 bucks, 40 bucks, that comes out to about $500. And yes, every single one of these PC parts can be purchased right now in stock through using my links in the description below. So yeah, you can either build this or buy a PlayStation 5, but you know, a PC has a lot more advantages over a console. So with all that said, let's get straight into the build guide. Let me introduce you guys to Cooler Master's new AIO, that being the Master Liquid Atmos, which is easily one of the best presented water coolers I have ever used in one of my gaming PCs. Everything from the packaging to the materials used is really well laid out and easy to follow, especially if you're a first time PC builder with instructions being on the boxes themselves. And not only is this easy to follow, but it also reduces the amount of packaging needed and it reduces carbon emissions. And of course, this is one of Cooler Master's latest all-in-one water coolers, meaning it does have increased cooling performance while keeping noise output low. And you can further personalize this cooler through Cooler Master's new software, that being Master Control, and you can even 3D print your own custom pump badge to further personalize the Master Liquid Atmos. So if you wanna learn more about this water cooler and maybe even check it out yourself, then I'll have a link to it in the description below. Alrighty, let's start off with the CPU and motherboard, which I've chosen the, I almost said Intel, <laughs> the AMD Ryzen 5 4500. This is a six core, 12 threaded CPU, overclockable, includes a stock cooler, 80 bucks, Probably one of the best budget CPUs on the market. And yes, I get it, the PlayStation 5 has an A-core CPU, but as you'll soon see in the benchmark section of this video, cores don't mean everything when it comes to gaming performance. And we're preparing that with an ASRock B550M Pro SE. Now this is a special edition motherboard. I don't know how long it's gonna be made, but here's the coolest thing. Right, here's the coolest thing. It's an all white motherboard you can get for 80 bucks right now. That is exactly why I'm choosing it and why this PC build is gonna be so cool for 500 bucks. And as what just spilled out, here's our motherboard manual. You will need this. It'll show you where to plug in what on the motherboard. SATA cable, don't need that. These are some spare M.2 screws. We will need one of these for our M.2 SSD. So the first thing I want you to do is to go ahead and take your banana and unscrew these four screws here for these two black brackets. All right, and with that exposed, let's go ahead and now install our processor. So take it out of this clear plastic right here, locate the triangle on the bottom left of the CPU, and we're gonna wanna line that up with this triangle here found on the socket top left. So go ahead and open up this lever right here on the socket, drop this in, Give it a little jiggle, make sure it's all the way in there. Bring back down this lever and this is what your CPU should look like. And then in the same box for the CPU, we're gonna find our stock CPU cooler. So go ahead and take this out. Note that there's thermal paste already pre-applied. Then we're gonna put the cooler like this with the logo on this side of the motherboard so that way it isn't in the way of our RAM. So line up the four screws with the four holes on the socket. Then take your banana, screw this in. I like to screw in each screw just a little bit so it makes contact with the thread. And once I think all four screws have made contact with the back plate, now I can go ahead and fully screw in each of these all the way. I like to do this rather than, you know, just taking one side, screwing it in all the way, and then going to the other side because I wanna make sure there's equal pressure on all sides of the CPU cooler. That way we don't put any flex on the motherboard. And then the last thing I want you to do is to plug in your CPU cooler cable into where it says CPU fan here on the motherboard. It's always gonna be on the top right of any motherboard you go with, and there you have it. So for our RAM, I've gone with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory from XPG. This runs at 3200 megahertz with a cast latency of 16. And if I do recall, the PS5 also has 16 gigabytes of system memory, so we're gonna be on par with that. And going with the all white theme, this is a white stick of RAM, that's gonna work with the motherboard. Then for M.2 SSD, we have gone with a one terabyte Sabrent Rocket Q NVMe PCI M.2 SSD. And I got this for 50 bucks, and you guessed it, it's also in white. There you have it. 
And just like the PS5, I think that also comes with one terabyte of M.2 storage. So same as this computer. So to insert your RAM, go ahead and open up slots A2 and B2, which you could find with this little marking here on the motherboard next to the RAM. Open up these two latches. Then as you can see here on the RAM stick, these two inserts are different sizes, meaning this will only go in one way. So make sure you line it up correctly. Bring this down, give it a firm press. You should hear a click and do that for the other stick. Then for M.2 SSD, this is gonna go where it says Hyper M.2. And remember, we do need this little baggie that came with the motherboard. This has the screw we're gonna need to screw in the M.2 SSD into the motherboard. So let's take this out. Let's go ahead and take your SSD. This will only go in one way because there's a little notch here on the connector. Give it a firm press, click that in. And then using a Phillips head one screwdriver, so screw bit that's smaller than a traditional Phillips head, Take that small little screw, line it up with this hole right here, <laughs> put the two together. You should be able to figure this out. There you go. And then for our case of choice, we are going with the Cooler Master Q300L white version. Now I get it. I ranked this case pretty lowly in my tier list video. However, this case is $40 and it comes in white and I gotta go with it. For the aesthetics and overall theme of this build, I gotta do it. So as you can see, there's some stuff on the inside of the PC case. So let's go ahead and take some of this stuff out. And then in here, we have a case manual. This has everything you need to know on how to install what inside this PC case, including what screws to use for the motherboard, for SSDs, for your graphics card. It'll tell you everything you need to know. And then in here as well is our baggie full of all the screws we'll need to install anything we want into the Q300L. And a cool thing about this motherboard is that the IO shield is already attached to the motherboard. So we don't need to put that into the case already in advance. Now, before we put the motherboard into the PC case, we are going to need some motherboard standoffs because I don't know if you can tell right now, but there's only two standoffs pre-installed into the Q300L. And if we look at the motherboard, we have eight holes we need to plug up with the motherboard standoffs and there's only two inside the PC case. So go ahead and open up your baggie of screws right here. And you're gonna to wanna to use these screws that you see here on screen. These are standoff screws. And one cool thing Cooler Master is doing for you is that they have a pre-included standoff adapter for your screwdriver. So you can better screw these in to your motherboard when we eventually plug these in. So yeah, let's go ahead and install the motherboard. So as you just saw, there's only two standoff screws and we need six more. So go ahead and use these standoff screws that you see here on screen. We're gonna plug six more of these into where our motherboard is going to go. And now with all of those standoff screws in place, I'm gonna go ahead and use our little standoff screw adapter that came with the Q300L and tighten each of these one by one. All right, I've got everything in there. Now let's go ahead and drop in our motherboard. Press this up against the PC case like this. Now all the standoffs are lined up with the holes and these are the screws we're gonna to wanna to use. As you can see here on screen, they came with the PC case. And let's go ahead and screw these in one by one, but don't screw them in all the way. Just like with the CPU cooler, we just wanna make sure these make initial contact with the threads, but once we have all of them in, then we'll tighten each of them individually. That way we place equal pressure on all sides of the motherboard. And with this last screw in, as I just said, now I'm gonna go ahead and fully tighten this one in all the way. Go to a corner of the motherboard, tighten that in, go to the adjacent corner, tighten this one up, rinse and repeat. We are almost done. We have this case fan right here, which we'll is go ahead and take care of right now. And we can plug this in right here where it says system fan one or channel fan one. And this will only go in one way. There you have it. Okay, for the power supply now, I'm going with an MSI Mag AB550BN. Now, if you want more wattage, you can get this same power supply in 650 watts and maybe even more, which I'll have also linked in the description below. If you wanna say, just be a little more future-proof. If you all don't wanna upgrade the graphics card or the processor later down the road, you can have a higher wattage power supply right off the bat that'll support those upgrades. But for the moment, 550 watts is perfectly fine for this system. Here's your power supply cable. We're gonna need that. Here in this little baggie of screws are the screws we'll need for the power supply. They're the exact same screws though that we used for the motherboard just now. So you should be able to have them. Voila, 
Okay, now installing this power supply in the PC case is a little bit different. And don't worry, the manual for the Q300L shows you how to do this if you're confused at all. But to install this power supply, we need to unscrew this power supply bracket found here on the back of the PC case. So go ahead and take out these four screws right here, as you can see. There we go. And here is our power supply bracket now exposed. And with this, we're gonna wanna put the power supply in to this PSU bracket and screw it in with the fan side facing down. So here's our baggie of screws from the power supply box. Let's go ahead and use these. Line this up, put in one screw. Let's go ahead and get another screw in right here. Then another one over here and one more here on the top right. <laughs> and now with this bracket pre-installed, let's go ahead and bring in the power supply fan side facing down, bring this in, push this up to the back side of the PC case and just like how you unscrewed it, now we're gonna wanna screw in that power supply bracket. I've got the holes lined up right here. Let's go ahead and take this out one at a time. Or I mean, screw this in and voila. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do right now, just to show you guys, is I'm gonna go ahead and take off the backside panel and I'm gonna thread all these power supply cables right through this hole right here, preemptively, just so we can have these all out of the way. There we go, now we have a clean system. And with that done, now we can go ahead and start plugging in all the power cables, all the IO, and anything else we need in this gaming PC. So the first thing I'm gonna do before we plug in all the IO cables is we're gonna move this and put it here on the bottom. Cause as you'll soon see once we take this out and all these cables with it, I want access here to the front of the PC case in case we wanted to put some case fans right here or maybe even a radiator. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the position of all of our front IO cables down here. That way they won't interfere with anything. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and tip this over, bring this around here. There's gonna be these two little inserts right here on the bottom of the PC case where we can put this. And fun fact, we can even put this here or on the top if you wanna do that as well. And oh, look at that. We have the screws already kind of pre-designated because they have these little cutouts right here on the bottom dust bracket. And to finish this off, I'll go ahead and screw in this last one right here. There we go. And now we can put these through the bottom. And now with this in the right spot for our front IO headers, now we can finally go ahead and start plugging in everything into the motherboard. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in our USB 3.0 header. It's gonna go right here where it says USB 3.0 on the motherboard. Once again, the location for this is designated by the motherboard manual. There's this little insert here on the connection and there's a little tiny notch here on the actual connector. Line the two up, should be fairly straightforward. And there you go. Then right here below it is all of our front IO cables for our power button, reset button, and other things. Now, to install these correctly into this front IO slot here on the bottom right of the motherboard, I'm going to need you to refer to the motherboard manual as you see here on screen. Once again, bust out that ASRock motherboard to see where to plug in what. Otherwise, just follow my lead right here. The bottom left two pins is gonna be for the HDD LED. Right next to it is going to go the reset switch like that and there'll be an extra pin to the right of that. Then above the HDD LED is your power LED plus and minus. And then all those final top two right pins is going to be your power switch. And should look something like that. Then finally, here's our HD audio connector. This is always gonna go on the bottom left of any motherboard that you go with. And this is only gonna go in one way, like that. So here we have our CPU power connector. As you can see, there's a latch here on the actual connector. There's a tiny little notch here on the top of the actual connection. Line the two up. This will only go in one way. Make sure to give it a firm press. And you should hear a little click, and there you have it. Then here is our big motherboard power connector. Once again, there's a latch here on one side of the connector. And here on the actual connection, there's a little notch right here. Line the two up. You're gonna wanna bring this around, put it in and give it a firm press. Sure, a little click and make sure this makes full contact. Then finally, here's our PCIe power connector. This is what we're gonna plug into the graphics card, which let's take care of now. 
All right, and for the graphics card, we are choosing the Radeon RX 5700 XT. Now, a few words on this first. You can either get this brand new or used, and I'm actually going with the used route for this one. I bought it off of Facebook Marketplace for $150 in cash, but if you wanted to buy something new with a warranty, then I actually recommend checking out AliExpress, and in fact, I'm actually ordering an RX 5700 GPU from AliExpress that'll be coming into the studio soon for like, what, 130. So you can either get this graphics card new or used because you really can't go wrong either way. If you wanna go down the used route, like I said, you have tons of options to work from, which is why I'm going with this Sapphire Nitro Edition graphics card. This is the best model of the 5700 XT that you can get. It's got some of the highest core and boost clocks and the build quality is really nice. And I think it's gonna look pretty nice in this gaming PC. And I think it'll fit too, just barely. Okay, so let's go ahead and install this graphics card. The first thing we gotta do is we gotta go ahead and unscrew this little protection bracket here for the PCI covers. Then if we look where our 5700 XT is going to go, I think you're gonna take off this topmost PCI slot. So let's go ahead and break this off and let's break off the slot below it because this is a two slot GPU. And if you're working with a PCI Wi-Fi adapter, then this is where you wanna go ahead and plug that in first, which you can plug here on the bottom of the motherboard into this bottom most slot. And then you're gonna to wanna to take out this bottom most slot PCI cover. For this build guide, I forgot to get a PCI Wi-Fi adapter. So if you need Wi-Fi, that's my recommendation. Otherwise you can plug this into your router for the fastest internet connection. Right, so now with that cleared out of the way, will this fit? Let's see. It's not fitting, but through geometry, we can make it fit. <laughs> All right, we tilted the card, get it in there, line it up with the topmost PCI slot, and once you think it's gonna go in, give it a firm press and you should hear a click, like that. And now, let's go ahead and return to our baggie full of screws right here. Let's pour this all out. And with the same screws that we used for the power supply and even the motherboard are the ones we're gonna use to screw in the 5700 XT into the PC case. But first, we gotta go ahead and put back on the PCI cover. So put that on there, take this screw, put it in, then go ahead and get another screw. You may need to lift up the graphics card, but I think this is pretty good. Screw this in. And here's the last screw we'll need for the graphics card. Okay, and yes, it is indeed fitting inside the PC case and all we gotta do left is just go ahead and plug in our two PCIe power connectors. So let's connect the two ends of one of these. So it's an eight pin connector. Once again, there's a latch here on the connector. This will only go in one way here on the top, that's in. And then here is the other one. Bring the two connectors together so we make this an eight pin connector. Here's our latch, line it up with the notch here on the top of the GPU power connector. And it should look something like that. Okay. Now let's go ahead and boot up the computer for the first time and once again, do your pre-boot checklist. Have your keyboard plugged into the computer. Have your mouse plugged into the computer. Have a monitor on hand. Of course, make sure there's power being supplied to this monitor or else nothing will show up. Most importantly, make sure there's a display cable coming from the monitor to your graphics card. Not where the motherboard is, where your graphics card is. And if you remember, go ahead and take out that power supply cable from your power supply box and plug in one end into the back of the computer right here, and then the other end into a wall socket. And then the last thing I want you to do is to go ahead and flick the switch on the power supply from the zero to the one, and that way you're gonna prime it for it to turn on for the first time. And then finally, with all of that out of the way, Make sure to have your eight gigabyte or bigger flash drive with your Windows bootable mini device ready. And once again, I have a tutorial linked in the description showing you how to create one of these for free on any flash drive. Make sure to watch that and do that first. And once you complete it, we'll go ahead and plug this into one of the USB ports on the back of the computer, doesn't matter. And once we think we're all ready to go, let's go ahead and press the power button right here. Ooh, there we go. And now let's go ahead and install Windows. Okay, go ahead and hit next, install now. Here's where you can enter in your Windows product key. If you have one, you're welcome to do that. But if you don't have one, it's fine. Just click on, I don't have a product key and you can proceed as usual. I'm gonna go ahead and install Windows 11 Home. Doesn't matter what version you get. 
I accept, next, custom, there's our drive, next, done. All right, so now let's go ahead and actually set up Windows. And just to remind you guys, if you haven't already, make sure to have your form of Wi-Fi ready to go in this computer. Or if you're gonna have this plugged directly into a router, then that also works as well. Me, I'm gonna go ahead and use this Wi-Fi connector that's USB, but preferably I recommend a PCIe Wi-Fi adapter like what I've used in previous build guides, or again, plug in an ethernet cable from the back of the computer to a router. So go ahead and choose your country. Go ahead and choose your keyboard layout language. If you want a second one, you're welcome to do that. Now here, let's go ahead and connect to your internet. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter in the password for mine. Once you're connected, hit next. Here, you're welcome to name your device. Now let's go ahead and sign into your preferred Microsoft account. This can be an old Xbox Live account or whatever you use with your current Windows desktop computer. Or if you don't have one, then it's time to create one. So if you're given this, just go ahead and hit view more options, set up as a new device, hit next. Then let's go ahead and create a pin. This is what you'll use to sign in every time you turn on your computer. Now for all these privacy things, I just turned them off because there are additional background processes that could potentially slow down on my computer. And then for all these additional customizations to my Windows experience, I either just decline them or I skip them because they're unnecessary. I just want a clean Windows experience. All right, now we're at the Windows Home screen. Let's go ahead and install graphics card drivers, chipset drivers, any additional utilities we need. And then to top it off, we'll go ahead and perform a BIOS update. So go ahead and open up your preferred web browser of choice. Type in AMD drivers because we are using a 5700 XT. Click on the amd.com link. And then we'll go ahead and select our graphics card, which we're gonna go ahead and, and check on the 5700. 5700 series, 5700 XT, hit submit, choose Windows 11, that's pretty easy. We'll download the Adrenaline Edition that was released this month, and then we'll let that open eventually. But for the chipset drivers, we're gonna go ahead and enter in the name of our motherboard, which is the Pro SE from ASRock. Right there is the motherboard website. Let's go ahead and click on that. Then go down to support, go on to download. And then here we have a list of different things that we can install. And honestly, all we need to install is this auto driver. There we go, click on that. And then if we wanna control the RGB at all in our system, we can also download that. And then the last thing I'm gonna do, like I said, is we'll go ahead and perform a BIOS update. So use any eight gigabyte or bigger flash drive, not the same one as your Windows bootable media device. Click on here where it says BIOS and we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and plug this into our computer. All right, here's our USB flash drive. We'll go ahead and download the latest version of the BIOS from this month. We'll hit on global. I recommend doing this just because that way you'll be on the latest form of BIOS so your system can have the most performance and least amount of stability issues. Let's go ahead and extract this into that USB drive I was just showing you guys. So extract. And there we go, there is our BIOS file. We'll go ahead and touch that later, but while we're here, let's go ahead and also extract and run our RGB software and our auto driver software. If we're given this little error right here that says, you know, this file isn't commonly installed, just go ahead and hit keep, show more, keep anyway, because it's just graphics card drivers at the end of the day, and it's from AMD's website. Sometimes that happens. So let's go ahead and run our graphics card drivers last because let's go ahead and run the RGB software, let that install, hit yes, I accept, next, 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 install, pretty straightforward. Then let's go ahead and run the auto driver installer. This will take care of chipset and other utilities that we need for our ASRock motherboard, hit yes, I accept, next, next, install. Go ahead and run this software. There you go, there's our auto driver install. Let's go ahead and click on update. Let's hit yes. And note, our computer is probably gonna have to restart, so make sure you let it do that before we get to installing our graphics card drivers. So our computer rebooted, now let's go ahead and finish up with installing the graphics card drivers, which doesn't wanna run, so we'll run as administrator. That should get us working. Okay, so it looks like it doesn't wanna install, which is kinda poopy, but that's fine. There's a workaround. We'll go ahead and download the auto detect tool that should automatically choose the right drivers and this shouldn't be flagged by Windows. There we go. Yep, hit install. All right, and with everything done, now let's go ahead and restart the computer and we're gonna do a few more things in the BIOS, including that BIOS update. So to enter the BIOS, go ahead and hit the delete key as soon as you see the brand of the motherboard pop up on screen. All right, and while we're in here, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is to go ahead and update the BIOS. So 
We are on version 2.9. If you click on here, that says tool. And I know the BIOS may look different on different motherboards, but you should see something that says instant flash or easy flash or whatever that's just flash. Flash. <laughs> this is what will let you go ahead and update the BIOS. So there, it went ahead and scanned everything on our computer and it found that USB flash drive with that updated BIOS file. So let's go ahead and hit update. And while this runs, do not touch anything. Do not power off the motherboard. Don't do anything. Just let it do its thing. Let it reboot. And then we'll finish out with doing one more thing in the BIOS. Okay, so it finished updating the BIOS. And now when we see the brand of the motherboard pop up again, we're gonna spam the delete key and enter the BIOS one last time. Keyboard is on, here we go. All right, delete key and there we go. And last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to OC Tweaker, load XMP setting, set that to profile one, that way our RAM is running at its full advertised speed. Let's hit exit, save changes, and let's get to gaming. So before we get to gaming, I wanna show you that you can easily overclock and undervolt pretty much any AMD graphics card through using the AMD Adrenaline software. And it's pretty easy. Just click on performance, click on tuning, and here on tuning, you have a few different options. You can either undervolt your graphics card, which a lot of people actually like doing nowadays, if they want to say, reduce the temperatures and the amount of power draw on their graphics card, but maintain somewhat similar to performance as to what it would be like stock. And then we have overclock GPU, which is what we're gonna be doing today, which is going to auto overclock our 5700 XT for a bit more performance, but at the expense of some more power draw and slightly higher temperatures. But since we have a Sapphire Nitro Edition card, cooling is going to be no issue. So for all of these benchmarks you're about to see, we are going to run them overclocked, but this is something anybody can do with their Radeon graphics card through using AMD Adrenaline software. Okay, and let's start things off with Starfield. Yes, even though this is a gaming PC, not a PS5, we can at least play Starfield. Cause you know, that's one cool thing Microsoft is letting us do with their exclusives is play the one PC on day one, just like Xbox. But let me show you the graphic settings real quick. We've got 1080p, mostly high settings. FSR 2.0 is turned on and we've got some extra metrics. So we have the CPU utilization and the GPU utilization. And ideally we want GPU utilization to be as high as it can be and CPU utilization to be wherever it wants to be, but if CPU utilization at all goes past, say, 95%, then that would show that we are CPU limited and not GPU limited, hence meaning a bottleneck. But so far, looking at it, we're getting pretty much full GPU utilization, and CPU utilization, even with that six-core processor, it's not going past, like, 80% at all. So, no, this CPU and GPU combo won't bottleneck you. And this is in neon. This is with a lot of pops. Yeah, this is pretty much the most graphically intense you're gonna get when it comes to running Starfield. I, you know what though, just to show you a little bit more gameplay, let's go to a less crowded area. And uh, one other thing to note is that we've got V-Sync actually turned on right here because I found some pretty horrendous screen tearing when I didn't have it on. So just note that the frame rate is gonna be higher than 60. Actually, you know what? We'll go ahead and go up this escalator and I'll turn it off for you guys. Anyways, like I promised, let's go ahead and turn off V-Sync. Let's see how high the frame rate can really get on this 5700 XT and Ryzen 5 4500. Almost about 80 indoors, okay. All right, so we're here on Forza Motorsport and real quick before we get into the race, let me show you guys the graphic settings that I'm running the game at. 1920 by 1080, high settings, anti-shop filtering set to 16X. Um, Shadow and cube map I've set to ultra, and just about the only things I've set to low and off are motion blur, lens flare, particle effects. We don't need those. Uh, one thing to note though, we don't have FSR 2.0 turned on because for some reason, the game just crashes. I don't know. I mean, the game's only been out for three days, so pretty sure that'll be patched soon. But still, here's the performance. And uh, by the way, starting from last on the grid, AI is set to eight, maximum difficulty. Yeah, let's run the spy. See how far we get on Suzuka. And <laughs> it's lights out and away we go in the Lotus Evora around Suzuka. I gotta do my best navigating through turn one because these AI are absolutely gonna try to wreck me. Uh, make room. 
Okay. Slowly but surely. Oh my goodness, the scenes. The scenes right now. We are on the curb. We are on the grass. Oh man, look at that FPS. Ooh. Ooh, we're just navigating. We're, we're holding, we're holding, we're holding, we're making it, we're making it, we're making it. Okay, that, no, that doesn't count. That's right, no penalty. That's right. The AI, they didn't see me coming. Oh, can I send one? Woo! That's a low speed overtake. Right, so last first challenge, maybe possible. We're in third place. Uh, we got to make up two positions within the next three laps. Right, I got to go ahead and put in some work. Right, and about two laps later, we are now following the lead two drivers. Sorry, I gotta focus going through these curves. Gotta make sure the car doesn't slide off the road. Got a little bit of oversteer right now on the Lotus to give it extra turn in. But that means the rear is really loose. All right, clinical, clinical. Oh, we are really catching up to the Degnas. Yep. I got a feeling, oh, that's, well, that was given to me. No fight was put up there. Come on, I want a battle for first. I don't want it to be handed to me on a silver platter. The Beamer gains on me. Accelerating out of a corner, but going into a corner. Oh, uh, that wasn't gonna happen. Not without contact, at least. We have so much more turn in. Can we get, can we make a pass into 130R in a stock? Not a stock, but like in an A-class car. This is the stuff only Formula One cars could do. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. He just turned in on me. Yo, yo, I need you to replay that. Oh my goodness. So that Beamer not only tried to run me off the road going into 130R, but it also just punted me into the chicane. What a dingus. Anyways, we're down in the lead. I think that's about it. Let's move on to the next game. Okay, and because I know you guys are gonna ask about it, we are gonna go ahead and play Fortnite. Just to show you guys real quick, we are running the game at 1080p with the performance API. This is the graphics API that all PC gamers choose for maximum frame rate. We've got medium view distance, high textures, high meshes, and frame rate is on the top left. Ah! Whoa! No, 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 no. Hey, I was doing inventory management. Oh my God. And Harley Quinn of all people had to show up. All right, pinata man. Let's do this. Woo! Yo, that's like my first 1v1 exchange I've won in like two years. Yo, check this out. All right, what does that do? Hey, yo. Oh, nice one. Uh, we can't, no tree strat. We got one. Woo! And then we're dead. Okay, I'm doing okay. I'm actually doing okay this round. I am I think it's the computer. Oh, hey. Woo, got one. Can we get another one? Yes, we can. All right, cool. Uh, we're up on five kills. And that's almost six. Oh boy. Tree strat, tree strat, tree strat. Can't do anything. I refuse to build, man. I just can't with that. <laughs> Is that enough? I had some good kills right there. I think let's move on to the final game of the build video. Right, I think it'd only be fair if we went ahead and did a game that is a PlayStation exclusive that got brought over to PC, which is God of War. Now, right now I've got the game running at, let's go ahead and check this out, 1440p, ultra settings, but I do have AMD FSR 2.0 enabled. That's something we can just do on the PC version. So I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of it. It's gonna give us more frames per second while maintaining graphical fidelity. And let's get out of there. I forgot the button that uh, lets you shoot arrows. Unless your, uh, your guy do it. Is that why? 
Oh, there we go. It's X. So far, I'm liking the game. This is also, remember, this is being run at 1440p, not 1080p like the other few games. And I think that's important because, you know, Forza Motorsport and Starfield just came out. They are very much unoptimized right now, but God of War has been out for over a year. So its performance is more representative of what AAA games should be like on this computer. Because after all, it has a 5700 XT. All right, I need you to shoot some arrows. Get his attention. All right, here we go. He's going down. He's going down. There we go. And will YouTube monetization allow this kill? Maybe? Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. No, so far so good. We're good. We're good. Oh no, I think that I think that's good. Anyways, that's God of War. Let's finish out the video. Alright, let's go ahead and finish out this build video with the one thing that I don't like about this budget gaming PC. And that is kind of the trade-off with going with a white PC case with a white motherboard means there's no onboard USB-C. And there's not even any USB-C on the rear IO of the motherboard. That B550M Pro SE, the special white edition motherboard, unfortunately doesn't come with any USB-C headers or any on the rear IO. So that can be a bit of a deal breaker. Although to get around that, just get a B550 motherboard that's micro ATX that has an onboard USB-C header on the rear IO and on the motherboard. And then for the PC case, look at the Q300L version two, which is what I used in my $600 gaming PC build guide. And that comes with an onboard USB-C header on the PC case itself. And that is maybe gonna cost you an extra 20 bucks or so. But if you want a USB-C, then yeah, that is one thing I would keep in mind. Additionally, when it comes to its performance, I think if this can actually measure up to a PlayStation 5 is still kind of up for debate because technically the graphics card that we have in here is equivalent to what a PS5 offers, which is about an RTX 2070. Just the thing is, I decided to showcase Forza Motorsport and Starfield, which just came out, they're very much unoptimized, and they're Xbox titles. So about the only one-to-one -one comparison I can really make with this computer versus a PS5 would have to be God of War, which this ran at 1440p, ultra settings, 60 frames per second, although we did have AMD FSR turned on, but that's something you can take advantage of on PC that you can on console. And I don't recall how well God of War runs on the PlayStation 5. But I really think with those two other games, that being Starfield and Forza Motorsport, since again, those games just came out and they're on PC, I think more game updates will make them a lot more playable on all sorts of hardware because right now it looks like people are kind of struggling to run those games, but at least being able to run those in the first place on a computer that costs the same as a PS5 right off the bat, I think is still pretty impressive nonetheless. So I expect those two games to eventually run at 1440p on this PC with more game updates. Because after all, we have a 5700 XT in this PC and that is the right graphics card you want in a budget PC like this, other than the Radeon RX 6600M, which you can buy on AliExpress for about 160 US dollars. And that is actually going to be faster and consume less power. It's basically a 6600, but from a laptop. And for some reason it's faster. And that's really about it. You could probably save a few dollars if you didn't go all white, you know, you could choose a black PC case with a black motherboard with black components and that'll save you a little bit of cash. But overall, this or $500, I'm actually decently pleased. I wish the CPU choice could be the i3-12100 because that will be on the LGA-1700 socket, which will make it more future-proof because you can upgrade up to 14th gen. Whereas with this Ryzen system, you're gonna upgrade to a 5800X3D and that'll be it. And then you'll have to buy a whole new motherboard DDR5 kit of RAM and CPU, but that's just about my only complaint other than there being no USB-C. So there you have it, that is it for this PC build guide. And if you wanna check out the parts that I use for this build and if you wanna build it yourself, please look in the description below, support me with those links if you feel inclined. And once again, I just wanna give another thank you to all of you who make it till this point in the video. You help out those viewer retention ratings and that is what allows me to make more of these PC build guides, not just for you, but also for PC newbies who are wanting to get into PC gaming with hopefully the right knowledge set of what's the right hardware to use for budget PC builds. So with all that said, thank you so much for watching and this is the Skyrimble channel, signing out.